that the Lord our God has made, and we choose to rejoice and be glad. Sure, we can complain, we can murmur about a lot of stuff, but I found out rejoicing is so much better. Glory to God. Hallelujah to God.
your power. I pray right now that I declare that every member yes. of New Covenant Sea Church will experience the power of God like never before, God. And it will invade their home. It will invade the lives of their children. In Jesus' name. Yes. Now, Lord, speak to my lips. Think to my mind only the anointed work of God. Ah, I declare all of you and none of me. It's in Jesus' name we pray. And thank you for the souls that are coming into the kingdom as a result of this word today. In Jesus' name. Amen. Come on, give a lot of praise to God for this word. The anointing removes burdens and it destroys your glory to God. I said the anointing removes burdens and the anointing destroys your glory to God. Let us surprise you. Make sure your mic is off for me. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. We thank God for each and every one of you. We'd like to welcome our audience on Instagram as well as on Facebook. If you're just coming on, please like and share. Amen. God has a word just for you. Now, I'm a word preacher. I'm not, I'm not just up here saying something. I, my assignment is to preach the word. Amen? Amen? Now, what you do with that word once it's preached is up to you. Amen. What a lot of us don't understand, you can be in a church that majors on preaching the word of God, and you still not receive nothing in your life simply because you won't act upon what you've heard. Faith is acting upon the word of God. Go to Romans chapter 10. Romans chapter 10. We pray that you be encouraged, that you be lifted up. I want you all to join me as we pray for my hometown, Bay Springs, Mississippi, Jasper County. We're going to be praying for them every day this week. Amen. Why? Because there's something spiritual going on there. See, a lot of times we see things that manifest in the natural, and we don't realize that it's spiritual. Everything that's going on in this natural realm is spiritual first. Before it's natural, okay? Things are not just happening. So the Lord led me late last night as I was studying to pray for my hometown and for my, my uh, county. And we're going to do that in Jesus' name. We take authority over the spirit of death in Jasper County. Somebody say glory to God. Hallelujah. Romans chapter 10. This is not my foundation scripture, but I just want to show you more. I want to identify myself. Romans chapter 10. Rain. Romans chapter 10, yeah. verse number 7. I'm going to identify myself with you this morning. This is who I am, and this is what I'm called to do. Romans chapter 10, verse number 8, says, But what saith it? The word is nigh thee, even in thy what? Nah. And in thy heart. So don't let anybody tell you, y'all just over there saying stuff. We're doing the Bible. Okay? Mm -hmm. The word has to be in two places. It has to be coming out of your mouth yeah. and it has to be in your heart. That is the what? Word. That is the what? Word of faith. That is the what? Word of faith. The word of faith which we do what? Preach. Which we preach. That's my assignment. Mm -hmm. I'm called and anointed to preach the word of faith. Not the word of doubt. Not the word of unbelief, but the word of faith. Hebrews 11 and 6 says without faith it is impossible to please God. And the problem in the body of Christ is we don't have people excelling or going forward like they should because there's a lack of the word. Somebody say a lack of word. So I make no apologies for who we are. I'm called to teach the word of faith. I'm called to teach faith and that's what I'm going to do to the glory of God the Father. Somebody say glory to God. Go to Joel chapter 2. Joel chapter 2. Now we're going to begin a new series today. The Lord has given us a word for this year of restoration. Everybody say restoration. restoration. And so this morning, we're going to begin talking about restoration of kingdom finances. Now, a lot of pastors and preachers stray, stray away from this because we don't want to talk about money, but we always beg for money. Mm -hmm. We always want somebody to give us something for our anniversary. Give me this. Give me that. Do this. Do that. Blah, blah, blah. But this is a piece of the puzzle that has to be preached. Faith begins where the will of God is known. Now, 
The people say, ain't no problem. I'm preaching that prosperity. I ain't preaching a prosperity gospel. I'm preaching the word. Somebody say, he's preaching the word. And in order for people to come out economically, that's God's will. The word has to be preached on money and economics. Write this down for you theologians that think you know more than God. Look what the word of God. Look, let, let me tell you what I found out in my studies here. Money is mentioned in the King James Version of the Bible 140 times. Money is mentioned in the Bible more than heaven is. I'm going to say that again. Money is mentioned 140 times in the King James Version of the Bible. It is mentioned more than heaven. Now, what has held our people, when I say our people, I'm talking about African Americans, what has held us back is this economic piece. Okay? It is time for believers who are African Americans to rise up. It's time for us to own our own banks. It's time for us to own our own school. Amen. Amen. It's time for us to own our own credit unions. It's time for us to rise up, glory to God. And I'm not talking about the family. But we can't rise up unless the word of faith is being preached about your finances. It is not God's will that you be poor. It is not God's will that you're going to struggle. Jesus said, yeah, Jesus said, you're going to have a poor with you all the way, but he didn't say it had to be you. As a matter of fact, Jesus said in Luke chapter 4, he came to preach the gospel to the poor. And when I looked up the word poor, guess what that word means? Poor. All right, go to Joel chapter 2. So I'm not ashamed. I don't, I don't take no, uh, I'm not scared. I'm not afraid. I'm going to preach this word because the spirit of poverty over this region got to be preached out and cast out. Amen. And I'm anointed to do it. I got the results in my life. And guess what? I'll be doggone if I'm going to have a result and my church don't have a result. Hallelujah. Come on, say glory to God. Hallelujah. Don't matter if you're in PG. Don't matter if you're in Mississippi. Don't matter if you're in Fayette. Glory to God. God's word is not bound unless you believe it's bound. We over here, we ain't struggling. That's no credit to me. We ain't struggling. We ain't struggling. And we ain't selling chicken dinners and pot pies and raffle tickets and a hundred women in red and white to finance the gospel. That is not God's will. God's will to finance the kingdom is tithes and offering. And let me say this to you. I grew up straight traditional Baptist. I'm talking about no clapping, no shouting, no jumping, no speaking, none of that. Sing out the National Baptist Hymn. Let me tell you this. You say whatever you want to say. But I'm telling you, I don't been, I done tasted the grain. I don't been to the promise. You see, I done tried this word, and it's working in my life. Yeah. And, and, and here's the thing. You cannot believe it. That don't mean it ain't true. That just means it won't work for you. Come on now. Amen. Amen. You preach no prosperity. God's going to preach the word of God. How do you think I was able to leave my job and come work for my church full time. And I didn't have to twist no arms either. I had to go to the demon board and say, I need to come. No, no. The way was already made, but it happened as a result of me preaching and teaching the word of God. And let me tell you this. You know, when you take a prayer for offerings, that's my point where I was going in the church I grew up in. You know, take up a devil and offering. Then you take up the uh, collection. That's what my grandma was going to say. You take up the collection. And let me tell you something. If I didn't have it in the first offering, I ain't gonna have it in the second. But we always wanna wanna beat people over the head, y'all again, but we're not teaching them what the word says about your money. Now that you are born again, you're redeemed, Galatians 3:13, from the curse of the law. The curse of the law was poverty, sickness, and spiritual death. Don't you turn that brain, that turn off your Instagram, don't turn off your Facebook. If you stay with me, and my grandma and them will say, I'm going to learn you something. Go to, go to Joel chapter 2. It's time out. It's time out for us struggle. It's time out of uh, Ralph and Peter to pay Paul. Now, what God will do, he can do supernaturally, but there are natural things you got to do. Like, get a budget. Like, know how much you owe. Like, stop cussing those creditors out and talk to them like somebody intelligent and say, listen, this is what I can do right now. But you, you six or seven months behind and you cussing them out, that ain't helping you. Do you realize that your credit score is a representation of who you are as a person? I, I have been low, but I'm, I'm knocking at 800. Who's that knocking at the door? I am. 
800, guess what? And you can have it. It don't matter if you're black. Don't matter if you're white. Don't matter if you're in Mississippi. See, all of that is a mindset. And that mindset has to be attacked with the word of God. The problem in the body of Christ in our church is we got a poverty mindset instead of a word mindset. Now, God ain't dumb and I ain't evil. Everybody ain't going to be rich. Do you hear what I'm saying? I ain't talking about that. That ain't what I'm talking about. This ain't no slot machine message. This ain't no go to the boat message. This is what the word of God says. I'm going to preach it straight with no choice. And watch what God does in our life. Amen. Somebody say glory to God. Glory Joel to chapter number two. And that is not from an arrogant standpoint. No, no. But I'm telling you the word works. It's too late to tell me it don't work. I've been under the word 30, almost 30 some years. And I ain't just been under the word. I've been walking this thing out. And so guess what? I got the proofs. Glory to God. And it ain't all about material stuff. Come on here somebody. Amen. But it ain't all about material stuff, but it's all right for you to have your materials. Amen. Anyway, you ain't gonna like it, but it's all right anyway. Joel chapter 2. Now come on, now get ready to walk this word now. I'm a word preacher. I'm gonna preach the word. But I got y'all a Baptist, that's why I'm gonna pay you to think. Joel chapter number 2. Y'all did it up in here. Come on, I got it. 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 Joel chapter number 2, verse 23. Be glad then, ye children of Zion, and rejoice in the Lord your God, for he has given you the former rain mildly, and he will cause to come down for you the former rain and the latter rain in the first month, and the floor shall be full of wheat, and the vat shall overflow, underline that word, with wine and oil. Wine represents the blood. Oil represents the anointing. Let's keep going. And, verse 25, come on, read it out loud, read it, read and I will restore to you the what? Years. I will restore to you the what? Years. Now, in situations and circumstances in my life, that's why it's hard to believe. But I have to take my God at his word because I go back to, I know that he loves me. And if he said it in his word, he's going to do what he said. If he said he's going to restore the years, then I'm expecting him to restore the what? Years. years. That means years in your relationships. That means years in your finances. That means years in your health. That means years in your mindset. Some of you have been in the wrong church for years, and the Lord is calling you out. And but when, he, when he, as he called you out, he's going to restore to you all that stuff you didn't get because you wouldn't get the word. Amen. I'm pretty better than you shout. Glory to God. And before I take it back, I add more to it. And he said, and I will restore the years that the locusts have eaten. The canker worm and the caterpillar and the palmer worm, my great army which I set among you. Now, the enemy is the devourer. Satan is the devourer. Satan is not, uh, people are not our problem. Satan is our problem, but he uses people. Amen. Amen. Even folk in the church that preach this Amen. doctrine that Amen. God wants some people to be, be uh, rich, white, and he won't black people to be poor. Not Bible, it is not the you're not Christianity, and I'm not gonna preach it at this church because it ain't right. God got he got a select race of people. He got a select race of people. In Acts chapter chapter 20, uh, Acts chapter 3, I believe it's talking about we all made from one blood. Racism, prejudice, white supremacy is of the devil. Amen. And it comes from the pit of hell. Amen. Teach pastor. And that spirit that is operating through the spirit of the oppressor wants to keep black and brown people back. Amen. That's what all this stuff is about in the government right now. That's what all that stuff was about building a wall to keep our brown folk off. The census said that by, the, I think in the, in the next two years, that brown and black people were going to be more than our other brothers and sisters. Amen. And they didn't want that to happen. But let me tell you something, you can't stop God. Amen. And you can't stop the plan of God. Vengeance and recompense is going on in the earth right now. And guess what? The politicians can't stop it. Who would have thought in a million years that that racist Confederate flag over this state will come down? But when it's God, it can't be stopped. I never said God. God is showing us. He's showing the church. He's showing the world. He's bigger than any Republican party. He's bigger than any Democratic party. Why? Because he's God. Yes. No Christian party. That's another lie I was taught. Yeah. And you talk about abortion, but you won't talk about killing black and brown folk. Uh -huh. The Bible says killing is killing. Amen. It said God shall not kill. Amen. That means you shouldn't kill babies, 
And I mean, you should kill black and brown folk and think it's okay. We just supposed to accept it. The devil is a liar. Yes. And his house is on fire. And he cannot down that one. Glory to God. He yes. called somebody yes. or bone enough to preach it without no chase of glory to God. Yes. Hallelujah to yes. God. We got to stop thinking what we've done. We put, we put politics higher than God. We put politics. That's what we've been. For the last four years, we put politics higher than God. Amen. And anything you put higher than God is an idol. And they, they portray this, oh, we the, we, the, we the party for the Christian cause. We don't believe in killing babies, but you'll kill a black man quicker than you can say scat. Amen. And, and that's all right, because you know they're not whole humans no way. The devil is alive. Amen. This is not 1960. Amen. Amen. You ain't scared? No, because God is on my side. Amen. When you get a revelation of the vengeance and recompense of God, you ain't got to be scared. And Dr. Martin Luther King had a revelation of that because he said, let justice go down. Yes. Like what? Because why? God is a God of justice. Yes. And no political party, no white man, no black man, no green man can stop the vengeance and recompense of God. Your arms are too short to box with God. Anybody in this house is here. Hallelujah to God. Now he said, I'm going to restore to you the years. Yeah. Then look what he said in verse 26. And you shall eat in plenty mm -hmm. and be what? It's time for you to stop struggling. Yeah. Now, a lot of our financial issues are self-inflicted. Yeah. Why would Peter to pay Paul because you're trying to be like John and John and more struggling worse than you? Yeah. We got to stop looking like we prosperous and really be prosperous. Yeah. Some of you, you got to look, but you're broke at the Ten Commandments that Moses dropped at the Bible. But you don't have to be broke no more unless you want to be. Hallelujah. I'm going to preach it in the house. Go to Psalm 75. <clears throat> what they doing over there in New Covenant City? Who he think he is? What he coming in here trying to do with us? I'm, I'm on assignment. Amen. I came to do what God told me to do and the rest don't even matter. Amen. Now say, don't even bring me that trash. Come on, don't know that's a sign of energy. Don't bring me not that trash. Don't people say, I don't care about what folks say. Because I'm focused on doing what God called me to do. And guess what? Whenever you're moving forward, expect opposition. Amen. Whenever you're moving forward and you're yeah. moving upward, opposition don't come. See, some of you at our church don't understand, especially my faithful people, why are you all under attack so? Because God, the enemy wants to get you out of here. The enemy wants to make you believe this ain't working. I ain't talking to you, you, you folk that don't come and you folk that don't get on life. I'm talking to my faithful folk because the faithful people in this church have been on our tent. Yeah. But you got to know, anytime the word is going forth like we preach it here, it's going to come with opposition. Amen. And unfortunately, the opposition is going to come from the church. Amen. Other pastors and preachers Hallelujah. who wonder why, who boy got, listen, if you got a problem with me, take it up with God. I didn't, call, I didn't ask to be here and I didn't call myself. Amen. 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 Psalm 72. And I love you with the love of the Lord. See, we got to learn, and the problem in the body of Christ, we don't really understand the love of God because we've been bro broken and wounded and bruised by so many people that when we experience real love, we don't even know how to receive it. We think if somebody loves us, they ain't gonna never offend us. If somebody loves us, they ain't gonna never make us mad. If somebody loves us, they ain't gonna never correct us. That's the biggest lie we've been told. You love somebody, when you love folk, you correct them because Amen. you don't want to see them fall. Amen. But you know what my grandma said? Everybody ain't gonna listen. So some folk boxes is better than talking. Amen. 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 Psalm 72. And I'm just like my man of God. In 2021, I'm going to tell you the truth. You may not like it. I'm going to speak the truth in love, but I ain't going to spit and swallow at the same time. On, if man. I say it once, I say it again. Amen. Psalm 72. Amen. I'm preaching better than you shall. I'm preaching much better than you shall, but it's all right in the house. Glory to God. Somebody say glory to God. Glory to God. I'm on the victory side. I'm on the victory side. Oh, yeah. yes. I'm on the victory side this morning. Yeah. I got so many notes up in here. Glory to God. But see, I got to preach that foolishness out of you. Yeah. I got to preach that unforgiveness out of you. Yeah. Yes. Amen. I got to preach that strife out of you. Yeah. Lord, do I have to say that? Yes. Lord, yes. have mercy. Hallelujah. And some of us, we busy about it. Amen. Yeah. Yeah. Swell. 
Where I tell y'all to go? Psalm 72. Psalm 72. Uh-huh. But look, but look, let's go to both of them. Let me show you something right here. <clears throat> go to your job and do what God told you to do. Amen. Serve and work as unto the law. Yes. Psalm 75 and 6 says this. How can I preach the way that I preach? With boldness. Yes. 75 and 6 says from promotion don't come from the east nor from the west. Nor from the south. But God is the judge. Yes. He put it down one and set it up another. Right. You don't have to be no brown noser to get no elevation on your promotion, on your job, if you'll just simply do what God told you to do. Right. Go to Psalm 72. Psalm 72. Somebody say glory to God. Glory to God. Somebody say hallelujah. hallelujah. Psalm 72. Now I ain't having nobody. But I, I, I'm passionate about it because I'm tired of seeing God's folk struggling in the same place year after year. Mm -hmm. Now, we're going to do what we can in the natural help the poor, but the <laughs> best thing to do for anybody who's struggling financially is preach the word to them, get them some understanding, and then help them, show them how to walk things out, and then after that point, it's all on them. Say amen, amen somebody. Amen. Say, say amen somebody. Amen. Now, look at this scripture for me and say, ye are God. I got drunk up here and I lost my place. Ye are gods. Because I ain't going to talk about that. I know you're going to get, get scared. Uh-huh. It's in Psalms. Praise the name of the Lord. Uh-huh. All right, here we go. So, now, go to Zechariah chapter 9 and 12. Zechariah. 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 Zechariah 9 and 12. That's in the Old Testament. If you're back you with Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, you're in the wrong place. Am I helping anybody this morning? Yes. Now, let me say this to you. And I'm not saying this because we're trying to get nothing from you. If you are not, if you're born again, one, and you are not a tither, number two, you don't qualify for a financial promotion. Amen. Amen. I ain't trying to get nothing from you. Tithing is a heart issue, it's not a money issue. Mm -hmm. Teach Pastor. Amen. Okay, thank you. Amen. Zechariah 9 and 12. Go there real quick. Let me show you something. What has God promised us then this year? I'm making good time. Zechariah 9 and 12. Are you ready? Yes. It says, go to verse 11. As for thee also, by the blood of thy covenant, I have sent forth thy prisoners out of the pit. Where it is no water. Turn you to the stronghold, ye prisoners of hope. Even today do I declare that I will render what? Double. Double unto thee. Let me read that to you out of the Amplified. It makes it a little bit more clear. It says, verse 11, that's Zechariah 9 and 11. As for you also, because of and for the sake of the covenant of the Lord with his people, which was sealed with sprinkled covenant blood, and look, some, of, some believers don't know. We don't have a contract with God. Now that I'm born again, we have a covenant with God. And that covenant was sealed and ratified by the blood of Jesus Christ. Somebody said, thank God for the blood. He says, I have released and set forth your imprisoned people out of the waterless pit. Return to the stronghold of security and prosperity, you prison of hope. Even today do I declare that I will restore double your former prosperity to you. He said, I'm going to restore double. Somebody said double. double. All right, go to Isaiah 61 and 7. Everything has to be proved out by the word of God. Isaiah 61 and 7. Well, now he can't read one scripture out there. I read the scripture. I was trained well in the Baptist church. You read the scripture before and above and below. Amen. I just don't have time to go into it. Amen. 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 Isaiah 61 and 7. Amen. Isaiah 61 and 7. I read some of them. I read the whole chapter. If we didn't read the whole chapter of all that we've been here, deep in time, we not. All right. Isaiah 61 and 7. Are y'all still with me? You're going home. Amen. What I'm talking about now is God was going to restore the double for us. Faith coming by what? Yeah. And hearing by what? So I'm getting your faith jacked up to expect no. Amen. And you got to hear the word. You got to hear the word preached and see it in the word. Hear it and see it so you can believe it. Amen. Isaiah 61 and 7. You coming out of the bar this year. Amen. You coming out of Robin Peter the Bay Hall. You come out of prosperity. You come out of credit card prosperity. Hallelujah. You know what that is? You looked apart, but all you're doing is swiping the card. That was a time when me and my wife didn't. Look, credit cards got us in trouble. When we got out, she would 
last song for a long time. I'm going to get now. Now. Do you hear me? I, I, I know how to speak. I would not get now. No. You know why I wouldn't get now? Because I'm going to go back down the road. But see, credit is all right if you know how to handle it responsibly. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. It's not a sin to get a law. It's a sin to get that law to stay under that law. Amen. Oh, no, well, some of them ain't. Well, that's what I'm saying. I say, where well, I say y'all go? I say 61 and 7. Uh huh. It's time for your credit score to come up, Amen. and you can do that by working on your credit. You got to do your part, and God will do His part. You do the natural, and God will do the super. Uh -huh. Isaiah sixty one and seven. It says, "For your shame, you shall have what? No. For your shame, you shall have what? No. Shame is when you in the line at the at the grocery store, and you got two buckets full, and the car said decline." <laughs> You better, and that's why, as the Holy Spirit leads me, I don't care if I'm at Walmart or where else. There was a lady in front of me not too long ago. Kept swiping the card. I said, ma'am, I pay for it. Swipe my card. Debit card. Not no credit card. There's a difference. The debit card means the money there. Amen. Mm -hmm. hey, swipe my card. Pay for us stuff. Not for no glory for me. Yeah. But I, that lady was embarrassed. The line was getting longer and longer. Mm -hmm. See, the reason God wants us to get restoration is not so we can just focus on ourselves. Right. We are called to restore the world. Amen. But you can't Amen. restore the world if you broke. Amen. You Amen. can't restore the world if you broken and you can pull up from the floor. Amen. Restoration is here in your house right now. How many of you have seen the Hallelujah. Hallelujah. For your shame, you should have double. And for confusion, they shall rejoice in their portion. Therefore, in their land, they shall possess the double. Everlasting joy shall be unto them. Go to Psalms 85. Come on, Psalms 85. Now, never take the word of a preacher. They can't show it to the word. Write these scripture down and go home and study them for yourself. Psalms 85. You're not going to struggle the rest of your life. I don't care if the spirit of poverty was over your family. I break it in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Amen. Psalms 85. Mm -hmm. Where I tell you to go, somebody by what? I did say. I did say. Uh huh. Okay. Go to Psalms 82. I'm sorry. Boy, I'm drunk as a skunk this morning. It ain't. I'm drunk. I'm drunk. I'm yeah. See, when you praise and worship God, and there's an anointing there, that anointing takes you out of this natural realm and takes you up to the next realm. Amen. Praise and worship is not a fad. It's not just something we do. When it's done right, it'll lift the service. Yeah. When it's done right and done under their knowledge, it'll bring the people into the presence of God so that God can do what he needs to do. Hallelujah. When you minister to him, he'll minister to the people. Amen. But most of our songs in church minister to us. Amen. And then we go wonder why we go home and we're still depressed. Come on, Psalms too. We got to learn to come in God's house and minister to him. Yeah, I know you got on your new mink coat. I know you got on your Louis Vuitton. But look, forget all that. I'm trying to get in God's face. If my tears, if my mask never run, let it run. Boy. If my hair messed up, I, 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 I'm blessed. So I'm going to get my hair done again. Come to the ladies. Because you know you used to be up in the club. Walk. You open the club. I come out hair tight. Come out there as straight as a boy. But you still want to have the time. Why we can't do that in God's house? Psalms 82. Psalms 82. Come on here. This is what God has called this church to do. I don't know about nobody else's church. Why? Because I'm running my way. Psalm 82. Verse 3. Defend the poor and the father. That's us. Mm -hmm. Do justice to the afflicted and the needy. Amen. Deliver the poor and the needy. And you can't deliver the poor without preaching the word to them. Hallelujah. Rid them out of the hand of the wicked. Yes. They know not, neither will they understand. They walk on in darkness. All the foundations of the earth are out of course. Yes. I have said, ye are God's little G. You ain't God, but you made in his image. Amen. You a chip off the old block. Somebody say glory to, glory to God. And all of your children, and all of you are the children of the most high. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 
Let me read that to you out of another version. Psalm 82. Uh, uh, first lady, find that in the Passion version of the Bible. I'm going to read to you out of the Passion and I'm almost done. All right, Psalms 82. Let me read it out of the Amplified. Look what it says. Verse 3. Come on, read with me. Everybody read with me. Get that, get, if you ain't got the Bible out, download it on your phone. Download it on your phone. You got everything else. Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and all that. Download the Bible. All right, here we go. Verse 3. Ready to read. Do justice to the weak, poor, and fatherless. Maintain the rights of the afflicted and the needy. See, that's what the government don't want us to do. The government is set up to keep the rich rich and the poor poor. Did the time I tell you the truth? That ain't for everybody. And what tickles me is our former president, you got people who running in behind him and he ain't even for them. That was, they pay great they can hire us. Speak. If you ain't no millionaire, our former president ain't for you. That's right. He's right in the house. He's not. He's for business folk. Folk who got money like he got money. You can't about the poor and the needy. But listen, that ain't the government's job no way. The church's job is to care for the poor and the needy. But we can't care for the poor and needy. Why? Because we poor and needy. Come on, man. Because that's what we're doing. 
Everything we do, that's what it's all about. Now go to Luke chapter 4. But now, who told you you can get it? Why are you doing that? Because I'm God's representative in the earth. But I'm just like Jesus, and that's what Jesus did. Go to Luke chapter 4. Come on, am I helping anybody this morning? I'm just laying a foundation right now. What is our subject? Restoration of kingdom finance. Now that you are born again, you are no longer operating from this world standard. You live in the kingdom, and the kingdom operates at a higher standard than the world. Yeah. I said the kingdom yeah. operates at a higher standard than the world. Now, a lot of us think the kingdom of heaven and the kingdom of God are the same. They're not. The kingdom of heaven is in him. The kingdom of God is on the inside of us. Mm -hmm. Lord, I'm going to show it to you. You know what I am. Break it down. You got the kingdom of God on the inside. You what is the kingdom of God? God's method of operation. How God rules around is God's system of government in the earth. Our job is to bring the kingdom of God to the earth. I ain't got time to go to the Fortress Savior. I ain't got time to go over here now. I'm about bringing God's kingdom to this earth. What do you tell us in the model prayer? Thy kingdom, God. thy will be God. on earth as it is well. Amen. So, as Christians, as believers, whatever being done in heaven, we're supposed to be bringing to earth. Hallelujah. Yes. Ain't no poor folk in heaven. Ain't no struggling folk in heaven. There are no disenfranchised folk in heaven. You might want to say amen. amen. See, I know this is a different kind of preaching, but I'm preaching up here. Hallelujah. It's time for us out, Minister Sean, to preach it down here. I got to preach up here. Amen. And we got to come up to where the word is, Amen. not stay down here in Lower Bar. Amen. Amen. So I got to say, how long have I been? Uh, Sister Kalisha, how long have I been on here? Tell me. Hurry up because I've been on here too long. Luke chapter 4. Look what Jesus said. Verse 18. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to preach the gospel to the whole. Who the hell know me to preach the gospel to? The Lord. Who the hell know me to preach the gospel to? The Lord. Jesus said, I'm an order to preach the gospel, the good news of the kingdom to folk who are poor. Yeah. Well, Pastor, you know, they just mean they poor spiritually. You know, see, we got a lot of folk in the church, they don't believe that they try to water the word of that. And the gospel is not just simply the good news. Yeah. The good news about what? The good news about how Jesus is anointed to bring you out of anything the devil finds you with. Yeah. At 30, how God anointed Jesus on them with the Holy Ghost and the power. How long have I been on? 53 minutes. Okay, it's time to go. 53 minutes. <laughs> I put my glasses on so I can see them. But yeah, I see where we're going. Yes, no. Yes, yes, yes. It's time for us to come up. Amen. I ain't, I ain't got time to still preach about the Sunday school lesson. Yeah. It's time for us to get revelation from God because we're in the process of bringing the kingdom of God Amen. in the earth. Yeah. God's, the kingdom of God is God's system and God's method of operating. It's God's, God's way of doing and being right. And when God's kingdom ain't no little eyes and no big you. Ain't no black people, no brown people. We are called to help anybody that's in need. Amen. But now, let me say this, because you know, people send stuff to our thing all the time. And somebody asked me, did I see it? I really don't. I don't have time to be looking at that. If I go back and look at the broadcast, I'm going back and listen to what I said so I know what to say next time. Amen. But let me tell you something. <clears throat> Y'all, we're a long way from being slow and on the short bus. Just because you say you in need don't mean we just going to jump up and help you. Well, I thought the whole to be the church. We are the church, but I am called to manage properly God's resources. Amen. Amen. That's up for you. Ain't going to call no name. When they ask me for something, ooh, I, I can be cheap. Why? Because you just looking at your event. I got to look at the whole thing. Amen. Let me tell you something. As a church of the Lord Jesus Christ, and no, no bragging on me, you don't have to be struggling. Pastor, you don't have to be struggling. Stop all that unnecessary spending. Stop giving folks $25 because they don't come to church. We paying you to be sick. No. We ain't got time for that. That's what we used to do. We don't do that no more. Well, you know, I didn't go to church. They didn't give me my bedevil offering. You know, people would be, got, I got the headache. And they don't come to church because they got the headache to get that $25. That's a poverty mentality. Come on, Pastor. How do you know you got a poverty mentality? When you go to the wedding, when you go to the repast, do you carry out five, six, seven plates? 
That's a poverty mentality. <laughs> when the church is outside, are you too busy fixing? You don't to the kitchen for You too busy fixing your plate and still ministering to the needs of the folk. Let me tell you something. As a pastor of the church, I don't care if I'm getting all of that food. I just buy my own food. Amen. We're here to minister to the needs of the people, and we gotta change our mindset. We didn't come here to be served. We came to serve. Amen. And it's a honor to serve. We give you glory, we give you honor. Yes. We thank you for your anointing today, God. Thank you, God, for helping me back up what I preach with the anointing of the Holy Ghost. Yes. Thank you, Lord God, that we're breaking the spirit of God over this area. In Jesus' name, that the people of God who want to be free will go free. Yes. Now, right now, while he is about eyes are closed and well, particularly praying in the spirit. If you're watching today and you're not born again, my brother, sister, look, ain't no other way to go but Jesus. Ain't no way to go but up, and that way is through Jesus Christ. There are not many ways to God. You don't get through God to the, through the ancestors. You don't get through God through Buddha, through Allah, through, uh, through, through Harry Christian, none of those. Through Elijah Muhammad. They can't get to the God. There is one God, and he's Jehovah God, and his representative in there was Jesus Christ. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man coming up to the Father but by me. So listen, if you're not born again today, my brother, my sister, what you waiting on? Now listen, you ain't got to feel nothing. Now I'm talking to young people and old folk. You may be a member of a church. That don't matter if you have not met the Jesus of the church. So how do you meet Jesus? It's real simple. I know we made it hard. And stop thinking that you got to clean yourself up and got to stop doing this and got to stop doing this. You come to Jesus just as you were. We're one is saying. You'll find him, he'll arrest the place, and he will make you glad. Is everything going to be perfect? No. Because the enemy going to turn up the heat because he finally lost you. But guess what? You get in a church that's ministering the word of God. You get on an anointed preacher and teach of the word. You can't lose because of the stuff you do. So today, I want to recommend Jesus to you. How do I meet Jesus? Real simple. Romans chapter 10. Verses 8, 9, 10, and 13 say, if you will confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, you shall be saved. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. Two things involved in the natural with you being your born again experience, your mouth and your heart. Nothing about your, your emotions. Okay. You may feel something, you may not. How? Well, what do I need to do, Pastor? I'm ready to meet Jesus. Simply pray this prayer with you. You ain't got to fall out. You ain't got to speak in tongues. You ain't got to fall on the floor. No, if you pray this prayer from your heart and believe it, you're born again. I'm going to ask the congregation to help. And those of you, there's at least three of you who need to pray this prayer with you. Come on and pray this prayer. Say, Lord Jesus, Lord Jesus I, realize I realize that I am a sinner. I ask, you I ask you to come into my heart and save me. I believe that you are the solution to my sin problem. I tried to do it on my own. Didn't work. So I'm coming to you because I believe it's going to work this time. Jesus, I believe that you died. I believe that you rose again. And you did it all just for me. Thank you, Jesus, for doing that for me. And now I accept you as my personal Lord and Savior. I believe it in my heart. I say it out of my mouth. I am saved. In Jesus' name. Amen. Come on, give God a great
It will explain to you what just happened to you. It explains things you need to do. It explains the importance of finding a right, a good word teaching church. Amen? We'll send it to you in PDF form. If you want the book, we'll send you the book too. Again, text your name to 601-618-8283 and your email address. If you want us to mail it to you, send us your mailing address. Amen? We want to be a blessing to you in Jesus' name. Now it's time to give. Let's go into the word that we heard. Amen. We're sowing, not so I can get a drive a big Cadillac and live in a big house on the hill. No, we're sowing so that we can do uh, Psalms 82, verses 2 through 5. That's, what, that's why we're sowing. And see, the reason sometimes God doesn't bless us with finances because our money don't have no mission. You gotta have, I'm a preacher. You gotta have money with a mission. Amen. If you are, if it's all about you, you're in the wrong way. Amen. 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 Luke 6 38 says, Give and it shall be given unto you. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over, shall men give unto your bosom. But with the same measure you meet, it shall be measured back to you with all. Psalm 35 and 27 says, Let them shout for joy. And be glad that favor my righteous call. Yea, let them say continue. Let the Lord be magnified who have pleasure in the prosperity of his servants. Glory be to God. Hallelujah to God. Glory to God. In Psalm 115, verse 9 through 12, it said, Wealth and riches will be in our house. It's ours, but it's not ours just for us. It's ours to be a blessing. There are five ways to give. They're on the screen. I'm going to give you two. You can give by text to give. 601 uh, 601-368-8909. Text the word give to 601-368-8909. Follow the instructions. Or you can go to our website, www.newcomingc.org. Click on the giving tab. When you click on the giving tab, that's giveable tab. It'll take you directly to the file. You need to specify what you're giving it to. Tithe, offerings, kingdom gift. Specify. Amen? And guess what? It's safe, it's secure, and it's free. Let's pray over your seed. Father, in Jesus' name, we thank you for seed that we're sowing in the good ground. And we thank you as a result of our song, the harvest of fruit will come forth from it. More men and women and boys and girls will be healed, delivered, and set free from the power of the enemy. Lord, empower us with thousands and millions of dollars to meet the needs of the people in this area. We declare all of our needs are met. We are, we are completely, totally out of debt and we are building our new facility debt free. And we bind every hindrance. We bind, Father God, every hindrance. We thank you for favor with the loan officers, favor with the underwriters, and favor with the plumbers, Father God, electricians, contractors, favor God. We stand on Psalm 44 and 3. We didn't get the land because of our own right hand or because of our strength, but because of your right arm and because you favor us. So favor will call us to inherit the cross. We thank you for it now. Amen. Jesus. Amen. Amen. All right, y'all, I'm out of time. We love you all so much. Join us, Jesus, and we continue to talk about the love of God. We need to get a revelation about how much God loves us. Remember, in all you're getting, get understand. I want to say happy 35th anniversary to my pastor, Pastor Creflo and Taffy Dollar. Glory to God and the World Changes Church family. Happy 35 years. Glory to God. Amen. Glory be to God. Thank God for each and every one of you. We'll see you next time. Be blessed in Jesus' name.